Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number one, fill in the blanks. Plants are called as dash because they fix carbon dioxide. Now what do plants do? Right? How do they fix carbon dioxide? They take in carbon dioxide during the process of photosynthesis so to prepare their own food and that is why plants are called autotrophs. So plants are called autotrophs because they fix carbon dioxide. In aquatic ecosystems, the limiting factor for the productivity is. Now, what do you think uh, determines the productivity in any ecosystem? Producers are the main groups of organisms responsible for production. And what do they need? How do they produce? They produce by photosynthesis. So for that, they need light. But in aquatic ecosystem, a limiting factor is light because not too much abundance of light is there. So that is why the limiting factor is light. Common detritivores force in our ecosystem are what are detritivores? force? Those organisms which help in fragmentation of the detritus. Detritus is the dead and decaying matter. So one such common organism is earthworm which is also called as the farmer's friend. Major reservoir of carbon on earth is oceans. So oceans are the major reservoirs because almost 71% of carbon is present here in dissolved form. Question number two, which one of the following has the largest population in a food chain? Okay, producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, decomposers. So which of these will have the largest population? So as you see, if you look at the ecological pyramids, I mean in most of the cases. So in that pyramid, you have more number of producers than primary consumer and secondary consumer. But do you remember that decomposers have not been included in the ecological pyramids? And we know that decomposers form a very important part of our ecosystem. Because when you talk about producer, let us suppose you talk about producers. So these producers are eaten upon by the primary consumers. Primary consumers are eaten up by the secondary consumers. And as per the concept of ecological pyramid, we say that producers are maximum. Primary consumers will be lesser, secondary consumers will be even lesser than primary consumer. So as per this, producers have maximum population. But what? where are decomposers? Decomposers decompose all of them. Even when a producer dies, it is decomposed by the decomposer. Even the primary consumers are decomposed by them. Even the secondary composers, consumers are decomposed by them. So that means decomposers are the maximum in number. So they have the largest population in a food chain. Question number three. The second trophic level in a lake is phytoplankton, zooplankton, benthos, fishes. Now, what kind of a food chain is this? In a lake, who are the producers? So the phytoplanktons are the producers in a lake. So these phytoplanktons, they are the producers in a lake. And the producers form the first trophic level. These producers are eaten up by the zooplanktons. They are also small insect-like structures. So they are the primary consumers. So they form the second trophic level. The zooplanktons in turn are eaten up by the benthos, which when in under benthos we have organisms like starfish, oysters, clams, they fall under the category of benthos. So they form the secondary consumers, that is the third trophic level. And finally, these are eaten up by the fishes, which form the tertiary consumers or the fourth trophic level. So the second trophic level is zooplankton. Question number four, secondary producers are, what are secondary producers? Herbivores, producers, carnivores, none of the above. Now we have heard about producers, those who produce food and the producers are normally green plants in a terrestrial ecosystem and in aquatic ecosystem it is phytoplankton. Those who eat the producers, they are called primary consumers. So do we really have something called as primary producer and secondary producer? We really don't have anything like that. Producers are just producers. So there is no concept of primary and secondary producer. So the answer would be none of the above. 
Question number five. What is the percentage of photosynthetically active radiation in the incident solar radiation? 100%, 50%, 1 to 5%, 2 to 10%. Now this I had mentioned before also. Like let us suppose this is the sun. So entire solar radiation which is coming from the sun, not all of these is photosynthetically active. So only 50% of it is photosynthetically active. So the answer would be 50%. But how much the plant absorbs, that is even lesser. So the plant absorbs only 2 to 10% of the photosynthetically active radiation. So this is like this much is available or this much is PAR, but plant absorbs only 2 to 10% of PAR. So the answer here would be 50%. Question number 6. Distinguish between grazing food chain and detritus food chain, production and decomposition, upright and inverted pyramid, litter and detritus, primary and secondary productivity. So let us quickly look at the differences. So we will start with grazing food chain and detritus food chain. So in grazing food chain, it starts with the producers. So it is something like this, producers eaten up by the primary consumers and the primary consumers eaten up by secondary consumers and so on. So here sun is the main source of energy because with the help of solar energy, the producers prepare their food. But in case of detritus food chain, it starts with the dead and decaying matter. So that the energy stored in the living organisms that is in the detritus, that is the source of energy here. GFC starts with producer, it starts with decomposers because this basically is the cycle of the decomposers. It is larger food chain because a lot of animals are involved here, especially the consumers. They can be primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary consumers and so on. So the food chain is relatively larger, but here only decomposers are involved. So the food chain is relatively smaller. Production and decomposition. So production means to produce something. So the process of producing organic food, for example, which is what is done by the green plants, that is production. Decomposition is just the opposite, that is to destruct something, to break down something. So process of breaking down of dead and decomposed matter is decomposition. So production is done by the producers and decomposition is done by the decomposers. For production, sunlight is needed, but for decomposition, we really don't need sunlight because it is just the opposite process. So why do we need solar energy? Upright pyramid and inverted pyramid. So what is an upright pyramid? So upright pyramid is somewhat like this. Inverted pyramid is like this. So in upright pyramid, what happens? Now as the trophic level increases, so the trophic level increases one, two, three like this. So as the trophic level increases, the number of organisms decreases. So the number keeps decreasing as we reach higher trophic levels. But in case of an inverted pyramid, the number or energy keeps increasing. It as we reach higher trophic levels. So there is a mistake here. So it, it will not be energy, but it will be biomass. Because energy will always, in, whether it is an upright pyramid or it is an inverted pyramid, but energy will always decrease as we go higher, as we reach higher trophic levels. So in upright pyramid, number, energy, as well as biomass. All of them will decrease as we reach higher trophic levels. But in case of an inverted pyramid, number and biomass will keep increasing as we reach higher trophic level. But the energy in this case will also keep on decreasing. Right? That's what I had explained before. So example of an upright pyramid is pyramid of energy because energy will always decrease. Now why I have not mentioned pyramid of biomass? Because pyramid of biomass can be, can be an upright pyramid, it can also be an inverted pyramid depending upon the situation. But a pyramid of energy will always be an upright pyramid. That is the energy will always decrease as we go to higher trophic levels. Whereas inverted pyramid example could be a pyramid of biomass or a pyramid of number depending upon the situation we are talking about, depending upon the food chain we are talking about. Like I took the example of that food chain where you have just one tree and in that tree, near that tree you have a lot of insects. So these insects feed on the tree but the number of insects are more. So this is an example of inverted pyramid. 
Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.